early in the offseason talked about going good to great. At this point, uh, how close is this team to great, and does it take two more wins to get there? Well, I think that we have certainly improved. I think we've made progress. Something that we focused on um, a while back is just trying to continue to improve uh, each and every week. So how close we are, I don't, I don't know that. I know that uh, you know, we're going to do what we've done uh, for, for a long time. And what we know is to, to prepare, um, to try to go in and play with confidence and, and execute, uh, try to build momentum throughout the week and, uh, and see if it can translate to the game and, then, and be ready to make adjustments as the game goes on. to get a team to, I know. I know, you're on fire today, backing up. Nobody wants to ask any questions. Apparently. Uh, how tough can it be to get a team to keep improving? Uh, you know, it is a long season, and that can be tough for, for some teams to do. Well, we've talked about it. Uh, you kind of recognize it in the middle of the season when the injury report gets a little longer. Um, guys play a lot of snaps, and um, we talked to them about ways of improving physically, um, or mentally, and we feel like the details of the meetings and the walkthroughs, uh, some of those little things that, that don't take a lot of uh, physical exertion is something that we thought we could do to improve because either you go out in training camp and have a bunch of reps or practice against another team or have a lot longer individual or one-on-one -on -one periods. Th those are obviously the easy ways to improve. It's, and then when you get into to November in the, in the back part of the season, how do you continue to improve when you don't have the ability to to run 50 or 60 plays? Just be much you, I'm sorry. Geez. You done? Sorry. Go ahead. How much, how much do you feel you've, you've improved and, and grown as a coach? Well, I mean, I try to do that. I mean, I tell, I tell the team, like the coaches, we're going to need our best efforts every week to, to game plan, to give them a plan that they understand, that they're confident in, and that they have trust in. Uh, we have to improve. Um, each and every game and how we go out there and, you know, what's new. You know, you always write down uh, questions, at least I do, and I know that the staff does, is, is what, what's the game plan run? What's the game plan pressure? Uh, what's the punt rush of the, of the week? What, what are the th And so that our, now our players, we have to be able to say, hey, here's what it is. They, they are copycatting, um, you know, some, something that somebody did a few weeks ago. Or this is the pressure, uh, this is the, the front that we're going to see that's new so that our players after the first series can understand, hey, this is the game plan that they've worked on all week. Uh, and you're going to see similar plays off of you know, formations that, that we haven't seen from this team in a while. So um, as far as my improvement, I just try to you know, come in every, every day and, um, and do things to help the team uh, win and, and be prepared. You face the Chiefs obviously over the season. Where have you seen them make improvements, and what are the challenges? They, they, they're very, they're very good defensively. They're they're playing um, very hard. I think the scheme, you know, the scheme's always, you know, the scheme is what it is. But the players are playing hard. They they believe in each other. Um, you know, I noticed in, in, as you watch, you know, their effort to the football and the way that they chase and the way that they tackle. Uh, those those are. Um, Great compliments to, to Spags and his staff, and obviously Andy as, as the head coach. They're explosive on offense. They're athletic. They're fast. Um, you know, it, it, it'll be a huge challenge. How does this offense stack up and compare? You know, you've already played to high-powered offense. Compare. We don't do comparisons or predictions. So I'll, a, I'll answer whatever you want, but I'm not going to compare anything. Sure, maybe just in terms <clears> of how explosive touched on it a little bit, how explosive this Chiefs offense is. It, it is, and it can score uh, from any part of the field. Um, <clears throat> you know, they have roles and they have guys that they like to do certain things. Um, you know, I think the thing that I appreciate the most about watching um, Andy and, and their offensive players is that I know what the diagram in the book looks like, and um, they, a lot of those routes and plays don't really look like those diagrams. They, they you know, Travis, for example, he's put the, the personal touch on, on a lot of routes. I would say every route that he runs, um, you know, there's going to be something to it that, that probably looks a little different than, than most tight ends. Um, you know, Tyreek Hill, obviously, the speed and the explosiveness. Um, they have plays that they like for Sammy. And, uh, 
you know, Patrick does an amazing job of, of getting everybody involved and, and, and using um, the weapons and his, his ability to get out of the pocket and extend plays. You know, that was a big factor in the game the other day, uh, his ability to, to gain yards and chunk yardage uh, out, outside the pocket. Against these teams that have high-ranked defenses, Arthur has drawn up good game plans. What are you most impressed by? Are you impressed by his ability to just in the games, the preparation during the week, the communication with the players? When you dissect kind of what Arthur's done well, what would you say the biggest strength is? Well, I think it's um, it's been very inclusive. I think that you know the entire staff has done a great job of you know getting the information to him and helping him, um, helping all of us you know sit down and, and come up with a plan and. Um, you know, there's there's run game meetings, there's there's play action pass meetings, there's third down meetings and red zone meetings. Um, you know, I think the the ability to have a great relationship with a quarterback is something that's important. I think the ability to recognize when when team when to go fast and, and when to to go on the ball. I think that's something that that has helped us uh, here at the, the the later part of the season um, when conditioning, you know, may may be a factor. You know, when we talk about all those things, the physical reps that, that you can practice with and, and how much do you run the players because here's the GPS and they've run this many miles or they've gone this many yards. So I think the ability for us to, to recognize um, when's, when's a good time for us to get on the ball and not huddle, um, you know, and then being able to, um, you know, obviously you have to be able to see how the, the flow of the game is going. Um, you know, we had one on third down. You know, this, the, the, the operation which we get the call in, I think, is something that's critical. Uh, and, and we haven't had um, many of those. You know, I think that it's, you know, decisive with the call that he wants. These last two weeks, you haven't needed a ton from your passing game because you've hit plays like the Cleve touchdown and Ferks are on uh, in the New England game. How much of that is matchup driven the last two weeks, or is that just kind of something you've had to adjust as the games have gone on? You know, each and every week is different. Um, so I think that the ability to hit big plays, um, the ability to score in the red zone, the ability to run the football, to, to not turn the ball over, um, those are all critical things. And so you know, we'll have to, to go in with a balanced plan and, and see how the game's being played and how it's going and, and do everything that we have to do to try to, try to win it uh, based on our plan and, and how it looks, and if it's uh, if it's working, you know, then we'll have to you know, obviously stick with what it is. And then if it's not, we'll have to make adjustments. The offensive line as a whole is obviously playing well, but that left side seems to really be coming together. How have you seen that whole process of Saffold and Lewan just come together and play the way that they're? Playing? Well, we can't put any more money over there. I know that. So. Um, you know, I think the time that Taylor missed, it's, you know, it was probably um, naive of me to think that that could just happen um, in two days of practice. But I think that there's a comfort level. Um, and it, with those guys over there, we've talked that the teamwork required to work in combination with, with, a, with a guy next to you, whether that's in the pass game, and they're running a stunt, or they're running a game, or they're a pressure, uh, or the combination in a run game, uh, whether you're on the back side or the front side, to, to work you know, through a player to another. Uh, you know, th those are things that we um, you know, are going to need to have. And you know, I think Nate's development and, and Jack's um, really steady play, and then Ben kind of the glue that holds everybody together. Uh, the Patriots game, you saw the line of scrimmage move. Did you see that again watching the film, especially the run game on uh, Saturday night? Yeah, I think there were times, uh, certainly, where that happened. Um, early in the, I think it was our second drive, I think we ran a zone play and probably gained eight or nine or ten yards. And, you know, Derek's fallen forward for the last two or three yards. And I think that's the push that when you see that early in the game, when both teams are. I guess as close to, to fresh as you can be, uh, those, those are positive signs. Some of it's by necessity, but some of your younger guys in the defensive back end and the secondary have had to play more because of injuries down the stretch. How much more prepared do you feel they are 
to face Mahomes this time than maybe they were thrown in back in November. Well, I hope that everybody's more prepared. I hope that everybody's, um, you know, gotten a little bit better at some technique or some coverage that we're running. Um, you know, and then it's not always, you know, I mean, necessity. Like everybody, we only have so many guys on a roster, and the guys that are, you know, active have to have a role in the game. And, um, you know, to be able to get, you know, Amani and, and Dane uh, in there and, you know, whether it's Ty Smith or LaShawn or, you know, or Dory coming back. I mean, those, you know, we need everybody. And, uh, you know, it was good to see some of those guys show up and make plays. Along those lines, Coach, how do you develop that culture? Because in this run, you've gotten contributions from all 53 to, to create the culture where those guys have the expectation to contribute and help you win games. I mean, I think that that's where, I mean, everybody's striving to be, you know, a starter. Everybody's striving to be um, the best player at their position. And also, you know, I think we've gotten contributions from guys that have been on the practice squad from, from August and early September to say, you're not here just to, to look at a card and, and run a play. You're here to uh, work out, you know, four or five times a, a week with Frank and his staff and uh, to get yourself uh, as mentally and physically ready to play all the way up until Saturday, uh, whenever you know, John and I could, could bring you up to the roster. And we've had guys that have improved, and when we've seen that improvement and we felt like they could help us, uh, we've, we've done everything we could to, to get them onto that game day roster, and, and guys have really um, taken advantage of their opportunity. With, guy, with Correa in particular on improvement, how much have you seen him? Perot, he talked after the game about kind of moving out of trying to make too many plays and just focusing on Is that a big thing with him here as he's progressed? Well, it's just a, it's a big thing for everybody. You know, I think that, um, you know, we all want to make plays. We all want to do things that, that help uh, the team. Um, but sometimes we, we stray from that. At, and when we try to do too much, I think as players, um, you know, it, it's a coordinated system in, in all three phases with 11 guys needing to be uh, in 11 spots doing their job. And so uh, the, the one thing I'll tell you about Kamala is I, I absolutely love his effort and his intensity in which he plays. Um, so, you know, guys that play hard are always going to have a, you know, a lot longer leash um, when it relates to, to me and, and how I perceive them. Um, and, and I know that he plays extremely hard cares about the team. And so um, that, that's why he's out there playing for us. And then we'll keep coaching him up and uh, you know, see if he can help us again this week. How did, uh, how did David Long do? And I guess with Jay on, is it just kind of wait and see how the week goes with him? Two questions. Yeah. David, um, you know, I think I, when I said after the game, it didn't feel like it was too big for him. It didn't look that way. Um, watching it on tape, you know, he's not a big player. He played, I think, aggressive. I think he played physical. I think he triggered. Um, I mean, he made a fantastic play on a fourth and one play um, to be able to to get through the little, uh, you know, rabbit hole and, and find the quarter. Basically, he was he mirrored the quarterback. He mirrored, um, you know, Lamar and was able to, to get through and, and come up with a huge stop. Um, again, there's things we'll need to coach him on. And then moving on to Jayon. You know, we, we don't practice here for a few days. We'll meet today, but uh, we'll see how he progresses. Jarrell Casey's been here a long time, and he's been through some really bad times and now some pretty good times. How, how satisfying is it for you to see a veteran who's meant so much to this organization play well and get to this point? Well, I can't say enough about his leadership. I mean, he was voted um, as a captain uh, by the team. Uh, he has done everything that, that I've asked him to, or Dean and his, his coaching staff. I mean, when, you get, when you're somewhere for a long time and you're used to it a certain way and, and new faces come in, I'm sure that could always be um, a bit of a, a challenge. You know, Jarrell's never um, done anything but put the team first in, in anything that we've asked him to do. And so when people like that have success, uh, you're excited for them. When you flip on the tape, AJ's gone up against, throw the stats out away, but just the tape, AJ's gone up against two of the best corners in the league the last couple of weeks. What have you seen from him 
uh, in his ability to get off against those guys and get open? I mean, AJ just keeps working every week. I love his attitude. Um, we've handed him the football. We've, we've thrown it to him, you know, on short routes. One of the huge plays of the game was, was a third down play where you know, catches it in traffic, um, gets upfield, doesn't try to run sideways, runs a guy over, uh, gets a first down, and we're able to score a touchdown uh, on that drive instead, instead of settling for, for a field goal. So, you know, it'll be a new challenge this week. Um, you know, for him and you know they mix coverages and they'll they'll play post safety they they play Tampa and they'll blitz um, you know so we, you know, every week's a new challenge I think not only for AJ but but for the entire team. How much change for you in the red zone? You're two, two, two and seven I think in the red zone postseason. What's what's been different with your guys? Um, you know I think we've been close. It's not like we have. We I mean we've been pretty close. And I mean I know we went from. Wherever we were last year, which was probably high one, I know where it was. Um, and so I don't think it was like just awful. <clears throat> you know, maybe have a, a play here or a play there, or a quarterback, you know, they gets out of the pocket or whatever it may be. So I think that we're, we're trying to understand um, maybe what we're doing um, and, and the players are executing. You know, very well, and that, that'll be a huge key to, to force them to kick field goals like, like we did last time. I think with, with, with any running back, when you would look at the workload Derek's been getting the last few weeks, you'd look at and say, that's a lot. Is there something unique about him that gives you confidence that he's, with, he's going to be able to withstand this 30 carries week after week? Yeah, he comes to me and says, give me the ball. Like, I could only take him for his word. And I mean, you know, when he looks over and says, I need a break, he gets a break, and then you know, we go from there. But I mean, he's he's durable. He trains. I mean, he's one of the, the the best conditioned players on our team. When you watch him in April and May and June, um, and that's and that's that's how he trains and that's how he's built. How often does he say, "I need a break"? Yeah. You guys are at the games. I mean, it, it's not very often. I mean, sometimes. I mean, it happens. He gets tired. He got caught after he ran. 50 yards the other day, and he was a little tired. And then we gave him a break, put him back in. And, um, you know, it means a lot to him. You know, I mean, he's, be, you know, he's become a very good leader for this football team. Um, you know, when you're durable and, and you perform and you play hard, you know, it's easy to be a leader. Last three games, you've gotten opportunities <clears throat> to get Marcus on the field with the offense. How valuable is that in terms of creating a moment of confusion or uncertainty, maybe for a defense? Well, we just like to try to have a role for everybody uh, that's active um, in the game. And Marcus, um, you know, not only had a, had a role in the game and will continue to have a role in the game. Um, you know, helped us prepare last week, you know, and I know that you know he'll do the same thing this week. Um, and he's been very supportive of. Of Ryan, and so we'll we'll keep finding finding ways for him to help us uh, during the games. Was there, the for an you, was there a moment this season that you felt this thing turn around to where you are now, or foresaw this team being as powerful as they are now? Just try to take every week, uh, you know, as it comes, and, and try to find a message to the team that that I feel like is something that we can relate to that, that week and then try to find keys uh, that will help us win and, and keep them consistent throughout the week and, and try to continue to prepare the players. I don't know where, you know, what, what that moment is or what that, that point in time. It's a long season. Um, it's a difficult season uh, to try to get to this point. What, if anything, do you say to this team about dealing with success given that so few guys have played this deep into a season? I wouldn't start changing the things that we've done up until this point. You know, that, that's that's going to be the message. How important is it for an offensive coordinator to kind of be willing to take the risks and to know when to take the risks? And I guess how has Arthur maybe changed throughout the season in that regard? Well, we always want to be ag aggressive. I think we have to be careful being uh, reckless um, with 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 our our play with our play calling um, whether you're a special teams coordinator that wants to run something or 
your defensive coordinator or your, your you know, me that, that wants something run or Arthur. You know, there's, there's some things that you have to take into account, but um, I think you also have to have a level of aggressiveness in, in any business to, to succeed. You have to take some sort of, of risk if, if you want to win and you want to get to the top. Several guys said after the game the other night that this team is as close or closer than any team they've ever been on. Do you sense that from compared to some other teams? And d how valuable is that, especially at this time of year, to play for the guy? Well, we spend a lot of time together, you know, and it's hard for me to sense um, that. I mean, I feel that. I mean, I'm, I'm in a different, I guess, position, I think, than, than when maybe I was a part of teams. Um, I, I feel that this is a close team. Uh, I feel they play hard for each other. I feel like they um, have the, the trust in one another to, to hold each other accountable. I'm starting to see a lot of those conversations uh, between players and, and coaches. You know, I ask them to hold me accountable and then the other coaches accountable. Um, you know, because we put a lot into it and, and we're here uh, together a lot. What's an example of that holding you accountable? Um, you know, as far as just, you know, scheduling or, hey, you know, a call or, or something I'm coaching or something I'm teaching. Um, I mean, ask Logan, ask Ken, ask as the, one of the three musketeers that sits up here. They'll, tell, they'll give you examples. They're always, you know, on me. But, you know, those guys put a lot of work in it. And those guys that play hard, that care, are great teammates. Um, you know, I'm open um, for suggestions. Talked about this, the moment not being too big for guys. Well, this is the AFC Championship. You played a lot of these games. You know how big this moment is because what's on the other side. How do you how do you help your guys avoid that? Because it's it just gets bigger each step. I, you know, I think you have to realize kind of where we've come from and how we've gotten uh, to this point, and realize that it's actually worked. That our um, belief. In, in this team, in this belief in what we're doing, uh, the confidence in which we're, we're playing with, the preparation uh, in the meetings and on the practice field, uh, the, the execution uh, during the games and, and the ability to build momentum throughout the week um, and, and try to ignore uh, some of the noise that happens outside this building is what's gotten to this point, um, not about what lies um, on the other side. Understanding the playoffs are always difficult. Mike. Can you imagine a more difficult three-game stretch than this one on, I, on the road? We, we, don't, we don't have to because I already knew what it was going to be when we left for Houston, that as long as you keep winning, um, you know, there, there's not a seventh seed for us to host. So we were going to be on the road. And uh, I guess that was a nice way to put it when we – you know, because it really our, – our playoffs started – uh, when we left for Houston, just the way that the situation presented itself, that if, if you go on the road and you win, you're going to go on the road and play another team. And if you win, you're going to go on the road. And, you, you know, and that's kind of the – it was an easy path. They didn't have to worry about if we were going to be home or anything else. Is uh, Humphreys likely to practice this week, do you think? Um, you know, as likely as anybody else when Wednesday comes. Last one. Seven touchdowns in a row for Kansas City yesterday. When you, when you see something like that in a football game and the momentum turn like that, what do you preach to your guys of how they can get on a roll? You know, it's um, – you've been out there as a player and you've seen it, you know, there, there's plays that happen and, you know, there, there are only five or six of them that happen during the game that, that you're going to need. And um, – you know, the message is just because you give up a play, you're still playing, you know, just because just they got the ball on the 30-yard line doesn't guarantee them a touchdown. But there, there can't be any panic. There can't be any flinch. Uh, that, that's when you need your, your leaders and, and your coaches um, to get everybody to kind of take a deep breath and, and, and figure out that uh, at that point in time, you don't need any cheerleaders. You need players and coaches uh, that, that can um, – get players a call and then players can go out there and execute uh, and not have any panic.